Hey, it's Ed, and welcome to a new series that I'm starting called Experimenting with Simplicity in Music. And the theme of this series is going to be exploring the role of simplicity in good music and great music and trying to apply that and seeing what happens um, when creating a song. Uh, in GarageBand, for example, that's where I'm going to work. Um, so today, I'm going to take you through creating a song in GarageBand, a very, very simple song, using some really, really basic principles uh, from music theory and uh, some of the knowledge I've picked up over the years and uh, see what we can come up with. So let's give it a shot. All right, so what I've got here, uh, let's get started. And uh, I've got a uh, track that I've got set up here and I've got a drummer, I've got a piano, which will be used for chords. I got a flute for the melody. I got a second flute, which I might use for an additional melody notes. I got these strings, which can add a little bit of uh, lift, maybe, you know, to the uh, to the sounds. Um, and then I got a vocal track here, um, which I won't be able to record because you can't do that on a screen recording. But let me go through you uh, through here what I um, I've got set up real quick and how I did it. So I added uh, uh, this drummer right here from the songwriter set. Uh, this is Darcy, lays down a pretty smooth beat, pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, I've moved this over to the left in this XY pad to the simple side. I've turned on the tambourine. I also turned on this follow and told it to follow the supporting cast piano. Now that's supposed to allow the percussion to track that track and stay in sync a little better, I guess. So I turned that on. And let's see, so let's hear what that sounds like real quick. Right, pretty solid four, four beat there. All right, and then I've got this supporting cast piano, which we'll use for chords. And what I've done here is I've turned on chord pads on the far right. There's a button you can press there for those of you that may not know. Um, you can turn this on. And what I'm gonna do is something like this. I'm gonna play these, these are bass notes on the bottom. And these are inversions of the chord up above here. And I'm going to do something like this. Just because it's going to give me a nice simple structure to work from in each measure and establish that chords very, very clearly and fill that measure with those chord tones. And we can build from that. Again, super simple. You know, you could turn this autoplay on. Uh, and I've tried it, but honestly, I find it uh, a little bit too much at times and it, it kind of locks me up. The other thing I've done here is uh, I turned on the sustain. And so that's why you get these chords ringing out nicely. The other thing I've done, which you might or might have noticed, might not have noticed, is uh, I'm in the key of C major. Now GarageBand does not normally put the chords in this order. I don't know why. But what I've done here is uh, I've set them with the way of, that I'm familiar with, which is the uh, diatonic scale, which would be the one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I don't have the seven in there, um, but this is this is the two again with the seventh. And again, I've got right here this five chord I've got as a, a dominant seventh. And then I got one chord outside here. Uh, I don't think we're gonna use it, but that would be a borrowed chord. Uh, anyway, that's what we've got for the uh, chord track. And over here, I've got my melody and I've chosen the flute instrument because I like that quite a bit. And it's just a nice contrast with the piano. So there you go. And it blends well. And these uh, strings over here, uh, I'll give you a little taste of those. We can slide across or we can tap. You get pizzicato. Uh, probably gonna just use the slide part because I think we've already got enough rhythm going on. So, all right, let's get started. So first thing I wanna do is lay down a chord track here. So what I have in mind is I'm going to do a very, very common one, four, five, one pattern, which is used all over the place. And it goes like this. And I'm also going to use a two, five, one, also very, very common, quite common in jazz. Five, one. So that's D minor, G, C. And, um, we're gonna start with that. Lay those chords down and, and see where it takes us. Um, so, all right, so let me go back there. Now, one thing to note, uh, I do have in here under track settings, 
I have quantization turned off because honestly, uh, you know, it's a great thing to get things down, you know, so that they line up and everything fits together on time. But to me, it kills the feel a little bit. And so um, we're gonna, I'm going to try to record this live and see what happens so you can see the process. If it doesn't work right, I got a backup track that, I'll, that, that is quantized and already pre-recorded that we'll, we'll jump into. Um, so let's try it. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. Uh, let me turn this uh, metronome on because I want to hear that beat clearly too. Here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, again, not perfect. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. It's not quantized. and uh, But I think it might be good enough. So um, we're going to try it. Let's see. Pop that in over there. Pop that in over there. So that's going to be, we're going to do that twice. And then um, we're going to record the 251 next. Uh, this one's going to be a little shorter. So let's see. So that's going to be the D minor, the G, and the C. Here we go. Let's see how that sounds. Good enough, I think, I think. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's copy that over here. And so what we're gonna do is, uh, so we got eight bars of this one, eight bars of this one. We have, uh, how many bars we at? Uh, five, looks like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, something like that, five, six bars, uh, something like that. Anyway, I can't count them right now. <laughs> so uh, let's do this, copy this, paste this here. Anyway, the idea here is to stay creative, you know, stay creative, stay in the flow. Don't worry about the details too much because you'll get bogged down and, and you'll, lose, you'll lose your creativity. So I'm not going to let that slow me down. I'm just going to keep going here. All right. Mistakes will make you better. That's what they say, right? All right. Um, all right. So what we got here basically is we've got a, you know, you can consider this an ABA or maybe an AABA probably a little too short for that. But basically, that's the kind of structure that you're looking for, you know, uh, in your song, you know, start out with something, vary it, come back to that same thing that you started with, vary it maybe again. So, you know, you can go on and on and on with this, like, you know, Mozart, Bach, and so forth. And many artists are masters of that, um, that song structure, but we're going to keep it simple. So we'll start there. Now let's go to the next item, melody. All right, so now we got our chords, right? So we've got got C, C, E, G, we've got F, we've got G, and then back to C in that first section. So now if I stay on those chord notes and those chords are playing, I can't go wrong, All right? That's that's one of the key elements here. Um, if, I land, if I stay on those chord, to cone, to chord notes, chord tones, and don't deviate from them, I cannot go wrong. I might be totally boring, but it's never going to sound bad per se, right? And another thing is land. If you land on the chord tones, especially land on that that first note, that root note of the chord, that's also going to really sound good. So you can you can do a lot of things, but if you either land on those chord tones or land on that root chord tone, it's going to sound okay. And that's what a lot of a lot of artists do. Uh, they use that to to their advantage. Here I'm going to keep it super simple, but I'm going to try to demonstrate that. Uh, principle uh, live here for you. So let's go. Here we are. Let's see what we can do. Can't get much more basic than that, right? Pretty basic. All I did was hit those chord tones, um, so you really can't you really can't mess up. 
So let's try a slight variation on that here for the next measure. Let's see what we want to do. Let's just play through it uh, and, and see where we want to go next. All right, I got an idea. All right, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. All right, here we go. Let me try that again. All right. Not anything great, right? But I think it's, you know, it's not not too bad. Good enough, I think. Take a listen to All right, certainly could be polished up, but I think you get the general idea, right? So now, what do we want to do next, right? We're keeping it simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, we're going to leave those. Now we're, uh, we're going to go on to the next section, which is where the 251 is at, right? Now that one is going to be the D minor, um, the G, and then the C. So we're going to try and hit those notes on this one. And we're going to try to not get too wild because uh, we got to keep the feel from the earlier section. So let's, let's see what we do. Let's see how that sounds. All right, again, could be could be much better, but I think it's in the it's in the range. You know, it's it's good enough to work with for this project right now. I would certainly change it up if I uh, if I had more time, but we're working live here. And so we can't afford to be too precious about our stuff or too particular right now. We got to get through this video. All right, let's paste this there. So what we're going to do now is uh, see what we can add to this. So we've got a section A, kind of B, A, right? A little variation, variations in the chords, variations in the melody. Now let's see if we can add a little, uh, little bit of support to that. And for that, I'm going to turn off these first violins because we've got quite a bit of treble already in that, in the in the in the piano and the flute sound, and I and I want to kind of boost the mid range and bass a little bit, so I'm going to take that out. So let me see what we can do here. Let's give it a try. Let's see how that sounds. All right, I think I'm gonna adjust the volume ever so slightly. Uh, that flute's just a little bit loud maybe. All right, I don't wanna get too, too detailed here on this video. So let's just copy this. Uh, just keep it simple. I would like to vary that. If I was doing this for real, I would vary this a little bit in that second measure. But uh, for our purposes, we're going to just copy this, copy and paste that there. Now we just got to do this section right here. All right, this 251, which is going to be two, oops, 251, two, five, Missed it there. All right, here we go. Let's try to record over that. Ready? Here we go. All right, 
Hopefully I didn't overwrite the next measure on that. Let's see. You know, I can't say this is my favorite piece of work by far, but uh, I think it demonstrates the principles I'm, I'm talking about here. So let's now take this and uh, let's do a little experimentation, right? Let's go a little wild here and see what we can do. Now, I talked about staying with the chord tones, and I, I tried to do that there, you know, and um, yeah, did a, could have done a little better, I think. But let's see what happens um, if we go a little bit outside. Let's see what we can do here. All right, I'm just gonna play, I'm not gonna record this. Let's see what happens. Notice I went outside and I, and I but I, when I came back and landed on that chord tone, right? It kind of fixed it. I was going a little bit weird there, right? Let's try it again. All right, that one's a little better, huh? Yeah, a little better. I kept uh, I kept those chord tones a little more centered, and I landed on the chord tones a little better. So even though it was a little more um, varied, uh, I, I managed to stay within the rules, the rules that I'm talking about myself a little better. So, you know, got to practice what you preach, right? So there you go. So, um, you know, if you follow those rules and, you know, you can deviate from them all you want, but bring it home, you'll, you'll do okay. Last thing I want to do is a little experiment with the uh, with the vocals on here. I can't record because that's going to mess up the recording. So let's just see. And I highly encourage anybody that's uh, that's uh, creating music uh, to experiment with using vocals just to find some interesting note choices or just to see how it sounds with a vocal, even if you can't sing. Now, I'm going to try to sing here. My voice is very much out of practice. I can't say how good it's going to be, but I want to give you an, a, a demonstration of, of the sort of things um, that I do, and uh, hopefully it won't be terrible. We'll see. All right, so let's see. We'll start on C And then sing F And then a G and back to sea I could sing all day If I follow the chord tones And then I bring it Back home again So there you go. Um, I hope that wasn't terrifying, but uh, that's the idea. So. This is, the, this is the concept, right? Keep it simple. Use those pr principles um, that make the music work, that make it fit together, the chord tones. Um, keep those sounds centered, landed on that home. You, you won't go wrong, and then take it from there, but never deviate too much because you're going to lose people. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching.